Hello everyone, welcome back to Super Mario Odyssey. So, we're back in the Mushroom Kingdom. And I'm glad they added it. Of course, this is the entire Mushroom Kingdom. This is the area near Peach's Castle. Oh, well, guess they did some renovating and landscaping. Is this Toad Town supposed to be nearby? Eh, maybe it's a little further down the road. Yeah, this is the Japanese version of Jump Up Superstar. Sadly, I can't understand a lick of it. Wish I did, though. Oh, not to be rude or anything, I just... Don't speak the language, you know? We'll get into Luigi's Balloon World in a bit. I wonder if my ranking like, is saved from across save files. Now, we're not buying excessive power moons. Because uh, apparently the total moons you can find is 890. So, yeah. Sure, why not? I'm surprised this didn't work with the modern day Pixel Mario movie because it's the same colors. Then again, it's nice to see the the uh, the uh, classic outfit more accessible. it to have its own little animations, but that would be a little different because they have to swap the model for each frame. <laughs> Onward to the castle. Oh, 
Well, at least she's not kidnapped. I mean, honestly, if the, they're probably writing a bunch of, uh, government stuff while, while being captured by Bowser. And I think she could a little time off, you know? Everyone needs a break now and then. Oh, come on, let's pretend that's not what she he doesn't do ooh, when we're not playing the games. Ha! <laughs> that's no moon! That's a power star! I like that little nod. Back to Mario 64 as well. I like how they, like, added a lot of mushrooms around here. I wouldn't mind seeing that more in the, uh, in more Mushroom Kingdom settings. Outside of Peach's Castle and Ant uh, Castle Grounds, you know? Not. Maybe it is a moon, or maybe it isn't. Who knows? Woo! 
Yeah, we're gonna need to build up our coins again. Again, I plan on 100%ing the game. With these, uh, playthroughs. But I'm gonna go at them at my own pace. Well, it's half of the regional coins, and then some, a little. Don't worry, it'll respawn. Pretty sure it's fine. Where do those squirrels get these points? There it is, again. There are six of them? Yeah, it's been a while since I 100%ed Odyssey. So, yeah. Be a little tricky here. Two down. More to go. Average of 81 degrees. Boy, I kill for, for a day like that right now. Well, not really, literally, but you know what I mean. It's just so hot here. Like, this was. I recorded this during the summer, just in case if I, uh, upload this later. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit, a little bit about uh, Sonic Origins. I feel like there's a bad actor in Sega that may or may not be responsible 
for some of the not so great decisions that have been made recently. Because according to new Yuji Naka, hang on, I'm going to show you a little shortcut. Huh? And, uh, yeah, apparently they're still using the Michael Jackson soundtrack. That was apparently, well, some of the Michael Jackson soundtrack that was apparently cut due to, uh, copyright issues. Sounds a little fishy to me, you know? We're gonna need Yoshi's help. Yeah, I was a little surprised that you could actually capture Yoshi. I had a feeling you could, but I thought we would be riding on him, you know? At least that's cool. Parkour with tongue. I love how he makes that little sound effect, too, when Mario captures him. Wow. That you can. It's a little ironic, because this, again, is another game where Yoshi can't ground pound. I like how he can just, like, uh, use the tongue just by shaking the Joy-Cons. And you can speed up by just rapidly shaking. Lick. This was a nice little detail. You could have Yoshi eat the mushroom. I thought I already, I already had ranking. Maybe it's on the other save file I have?
Eh. Maybe we'll get this one later. It's all over the place. Now I know there's more fruit than that. Indeed. Now, I'm not doing picture match yet. Because it can be a little difficult. And I, uh, kind of need to use OBS a little to help me with that. Call it cheating, if you will. But the second one is extremely difficult. And I'm... And I'm only doing it to speed things along with the video. That's four down. Peach amiibo, so we don't like uh, coin. We're gonna need a lot to buy all the costumes and whatnot. Curious about how the Mushroom Kingdom's economy works. Eric, can these regional coins put a lot of interesting things on that? Because gold alone should be, you know, good enough. But there's a lot of coins, like, scattered all over, like, like the Mario universe, so... Yeah, doesn't look like it's a bad economy. Nobody's homeless or anything. At least in the Mushroom Kingdom. As far as I can tell.
or any other kingdom. Maybe Rogueport? Maybe Rogueport? I'm not 100% sure. Woohoo! 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 So I'm pretty sure there's like a balance between work and work, trade, and currencies. And I guess the regional coins even thing things out as well. Hopefully this is the last sheep. Bingo! Hey, anytime. I mean, it's Mario pretty much doing all the work along with Cappy. I'm just the guy behind the controller when you think about it. Heh! <laughs> <laughs> Love that little nod to 3D land. I'm glad they put it there. Along with the uh, Mario 64 references and whatnot. Also, I did not know the Mushroom Kingdom was mushroom shaped in, in terms of a con. Hey, hey, hang on! going anywhere yet. Okay. Yeah, the bean can the bean bean kingdom should be nearby. I guess it's somewhere near the uh I guess maybe that little, some of the landmarks there could be? I know there was an unused, an unused spot of Isle Delfino, and again, the Odyssey is an older model according to Cappy, so maybe this globe hasn't been updated in a while. Like, there should be Delfino on the Gamma. Doggo. At least we know that the people in the Mushroom Kingdom ha have pets like this.
Watch this. Hit! Doggy. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Well, there's the last nut. Huh. Looks like we need to use the big nut. Then again, we can't carry this one. I'm all using the beanstalk. Darn. It's going to be a trek. I rule sometimes. I forgot we can't roll like that. Oh, I uh, like carrying something like this. Finally, somebody with taste! So yeah, I was ecstatic to see this. I know it's not the original model, but it looks like they edited it a little just to clean it up. Which I'm okay with. Somewhat. Right, I'm just glad it's in. Just put it there. Like, this made me ecstatic. Other than that, it's pretty much the same model. Model it was from Super Mario 64.
Bingo! Well, we're here, we just gonna buy that. I love this little nod. You know where this is. They even kept the skybox for this area. <laughs> and even the uh, 2D rotating trees. You can even climb them! Yeah, I know how to do that. if anyone was curious of what I've been playing lately. Hey, let's see. Hang on, I don't want to really mess this up. Oh, come on! Oddly enough, this is a nod back to opening the chest in the uh, certain sections of Mario 64, which is really cool. I caught that nod. Well, the game was inspired... Well, this game was inspired by Mario 64's more sandbox, uh... like, levels.
Also, I'm surprised that they managed to find Luigi and get the source code for for Super Mario 64 with that leak. Pretty sure they weren't happy about it, but I think maybe they really should consider the uh, letting. I've talked about like Nintendo going the Valve route with uh, mods and ROM hacks and fan games. I really think they should have their own little like platform on the Switch for it, or, their, or in a future console. But yeah, anyway, back to Sonic Origins. Yeah, I'm not really happy what's going on here. Apparently it's not Sonic Team's fault. It's not Izuka's fault. It's not Headcan's fault. It's not the Mania Team's fault. But there... But something stinks like rotten meat. Like I said on Twitter. Better. According to Mr. Naka, they're still using the tracks Michael Jackson composed. Apparently, Mr. Jackson wasn't the only person who helped compose. Ugh. Hate to do it to you, Toad, but... You gotta get a little mischievous. But yeah, anyway. On top of that, apparently there's been a ton of bugs from the game. Because apparently... When they remastered all the other games... They sent their work into Sega, who basically compiled them into one thing. And there was a lot of crunch involved. <laughs> it didn't do it to him, but... Eh. But back to Sonic main I mean, Origins. There was a lot of crunch involved around it. And yeah. And plus DLC for a classic game? Collection? Didn't that just be a standalone feature? I know Mania added like... Like a character two new characters in awkward mode, but that was a reasonable price. But something for a pre-order bonus? Eh? I mean, like, and they were having, like, this crunch during porting and compiling all the games together. They should have known better than that. That was a recipe for disaster. Sturf. They've had a history of doing that before, and they know it's a recipe for disaster. And I'm slightly worried about forces. I mean, uh, not forces, I mean, uh... Frontiers. Ayers, I have no doubt in my mind the story and voice acting will be amazing. And, I mean, we got Ian Flynn on board on this, so that's a step in the right direction. But I can't feel like there... Help but feel like there's a bit of blackballing here. Here. So it's not Izuka. It's not Sonic Team. It's not the Mania Team. Apparently someone at, at Sega feels like a bad actor here. Here with all these ridiculous mandates and whatnot. Maybe it's another person with the mandates. I'm not a fan of them, but back to this. This is really hindering Sonic the Hedgehog's potential for a step back into, like, 
a more reputable reputation for his games. Like, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Forces gameplay-wise. Well, at the same time, I'm a little concerned. I heard there's going to be a move pool, so all my concerns about the move set sh that should be eased. Except maybe the spin dash? Like, like I think that would have been a perfect fit for that. At an open world Sonic game. And I, I feel like, like there wasn't really, other than much creativity, flowing around the level design of Frontiers, is from what we've seen so far. They could be saving some surprises. I'm hoping they are. Are because, like, I understand they wanted to go similar to the route of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, uh, but you gotta do it at your own medium. That makes it unique. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Like, Pokemon clearly had inspiration from Mario Odyssey and, uh, Breath of the Wild. But it did it in its own way, set in an ancient Sinnoh region. And, and had vast gameplay differences. You can see the inspiration, but at the same time, it doesn't completely cop. It, or like, just goes with it and rolls with it 100%. Yeah, because even in Legends Arceus, the environments were, since you can go to, are, are vastly different from Breath of the Wild. Well, it's in their own way. And, and it has its own sense of identity. Sonic Forces feels like a tech demo in terms of level design. It looks fun. Um, the architecture design is nice. nice. Some of the areas look nice, but I'm just hoping it's not all just grassland and in green hell. Hell, like, they need to take some Sonic somewhere new, like, what Mario, what they did with Mario in this game. It's okay to go back to it. It's okay to include it, but you gotta include other things in there too. Now, if I I don't know if that was intentional or a didn't have any other ideas, or they just weren't able to do it. Like, didn't have the creative freedom to do as such. But now, all this, these issues with uh, Origins come out, I feel like this was, like, more intentional. Because they, I feel like they knew what we wanted. Did see like something new in terms of environments, more on the fields of colors. Or the adventure series. But yeah. Thank <laughs> you.
Another surprising thing is that they really didn't show off the demo at the not E3 E3. That that's what we're calling it now apparently. Oops. Double loops. And all we got was leaks. However, from what I, we're hearing, it sounds good, but I'm still a little skeptical. Oh, from what I'm hearing from people who played the demo, it sounds good. Good. I mean, it's like the spin dash is an unlockable move. Then go for it. Or something similar in the lines. Like, in terms of a skill tree. Hey, yeah, but I felt like that would have been like a no-brainer for like that. I'm glad that homing attacks in, because that's an essential for Sonic at this point. And I- and the boost is a good idea. Yeah, but it feels completely different from how it, it worked in previous Sonic games with the whole gauge and being a bonus where you don't have to stop and charge, it, charge up speed. You just have that speed right away. And it, you get more of the boost by just playing well or something like that. But back to Mania. I mean, not, not Mania. Origins. Good lord, that's gonna be a little hard for me. <sighs> like, exactly... I, I, did this... I feel like this was also bad planning. Like, if they didn't have the rights to the music, they... They should have acquired them before making the game, because they knew the fan reaction. And don't get me wrong, having June remaster some of the prototype soundtracks was a brilliant idea, but I feel like that there should be an option, much like Sonic 3 Airs, to turn them on and off. And given the competition Origins have, like, with Sonic 3 Air, and the vast alternatives, and the major re-releases of pretty much all the other Sonic games. They, they, I, a lot of people just don't, wouldn't see any reason other than the animated cutscenes, which are probably on YouTube right now, to buy it, sadly. Like, and I feel like this was a way to save a few cents that eventually cost them a few hundred dollars. Like with Archie again. And my opinion, my humble opinion, I don't know about you, but I feel like the Ken Penders debacle with the copyrights didn't easy be fixed by just paying him a ridiculous sort of money to use those characters. Just pay the man!
But either way, they, they really should have just considered, you know, like letting that out better with that. The time gap between Mania and Forces, they have plenty of time for the right. With Penders, they, they could just give him, give him the money he wants. But didn't. So, Penders now owns those characters. Or somehow is able to use those characters because according to a Mr. Off, who the Sonic fandom is, is very familiar with. <sighs> Apparently, there has been a lot of legal loopholes that Mr. Pender's been sidestepping, and Sega has been allowing them to get away with. Something tells me they either just don't really care, or they just wanted to save a few cents, which cost them a few hundred dollars. I know I keep repeating that like a broken record, but I can't help but feel that. And then suddenly they put all these mandates out for Sonic that the fandom is not very happy about. It feels kind of like a slap in the face for Sonic fans like us. Us and restricting like the creative freedom of some of the writers, like no no characters from Archie, like the Freedom Fighters, even though they still have their rights. Right. And just, like, pretty much turning Shadow's character all together into, like, to, like, this edgelord. While Shadow was indeed edgy, he was likable. Oh. And they kind of took that away from him. Him. Yes, he's an anti-hero. Oh, but he's a, 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 the more good side of anti-heroes. Yes, he's a rival to Sonic. But he's not like... Yeah. They've been doing with him. Like Shadow had a heart, no matter how, how how dark his characteristics were. That was the point. All right, but with these mandates, that that's been undone. And Tails, Tails had a lot more guts. Like, unless it's PTSD, somehow, which he probably should have gotten over, somewhat, I'm not, I don't know how that works, but, like, he faced Eggman before, by himself, in the Adventure Games, and Chaos Zero, so unless Sonic being beaten like that really scarred him, Something's not right. Like, I've seen them try to reincorporate some other characters like Shadow. Knuckles and Tails. But... That's only, like, occasionally slipping. Dang, and they're very restricted. And as much as people like to rag on Sonic 06 for its flaws, I think the uh, little fan-made remake of Sonic 06 proves to us that in concept it could have worked, given more time. Now don't get me wrong, Sonic 06 had its level design problems, but it handled how to use characters brilliantly. And the characters, in terms of the story writing, stayed true to him. 
And I know the story can be a confuddling mess, but at least the characters were handled right there. I mean, you don't have to play Sonic 06 to know that, that it was kind of a train wreck. But the remake pretty much proves that given a lot more time, it, it could have been good. I feel like that's kind of what's happening again with Sonic 06 here. Here in Origins, and a lot of other Sonic games, and maybe even Frontiers. They're rushing again. Now, I understand Sonic games are supposed to go fast, but rushing development it is usually not the best idea. How do we get that moon there? Yeah, I know, odd for me talking about, like, Sonic in a Mario video, but, eh, what are you gonna do? This might not be even relevant by the time it gets uploaded. But my biggest question is, who is making all these bad choices? Eh. Who knows? Anyway, I think that's it for now. Because this video was an hour long. Yep. So, goodbye everybody. Thank you for watching and see you around.